Hello and welcome back to One on One Shadow Boxing. Have your say. I'm still at WTV Studios with Ivan Quill. I, I always told you you're Ivan Pigeon for me because he's another <laughs> bird. But that's just what's right. Bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the title and energy, Ivan. Okay. Uh, what we have in Australia, and particularly in Western Australia, yep. with regard to tidal energy. Yep. And what's the perspective? What can, what can we do? Why and how? Because I heard lots of pros and contras yes. from science about right. tidal energy. Okay, well, first of all, um, according to that Australian Energy Resource Assessment put out by Bree and Geoscience Australia, um, they get, give a figure which I believe they got from NOAA in the US as to the estimated um, kinetic energy, that is the horizontal flow of, uh, of the water um, along the Kimberley coast. And this amounts to an amount of energy which is 14 times more. I mean, if we could collect all of that energy and drive turbines, yes. it would be 14 times more electricity than we currently generate in the whole of Australia. That's, ever. And that's much more than what we need, ever. Exactly, much more than what we need. So why don't we just sitting there in the Kimberley and try to generate that flow of energy from the horizontal movement of the water? Well, yeah, because uh, underwater um, horizontal turbines uh, and uh, vertical axis turbines are still fairly experimental. There are a few of them around the world that have been running for a couple of years. At the moment, they last for about 25 years, so you know, you're going to be constantly replacing them. To maintain them is quite expensive because you have to lift them up from the bottom of the ocean again. But there is a, a, a more recent development in what they call a tidal fence, which is developed by Blue Energy in Canada. Uh, so what where is the tidal fence? You, you build like a wall between, say, an island and the shore, or between two islands where the tide rushes through, and you have uh, uh, vertical axis uh, turbines creating a fence and being so the water has to flow through and turn a, uh, a generator which is uh, mounted above the water level. Now that, that is a more economical uh, way of, of capturing uh, tidal. tidal kinetic energy or horizontal flow energy. Again, it's also you know fairly new and experimental, and uh, I guess you know. For big money investors, they are saying, yeah, we want something that's tried and tested. Well, the tidal energy that is tried and tested is uh, tidal range energy, which makes use of the difference in height of the water. Um, of the sea level changes the height, yes? Exactly. So the, 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 the tides in the Kimberley go up to 13.3 uh, meters in places. Pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, according to the CSIRO's publication 2015-2050, they say it only goes to 9.2 meters, but you only have to look at the Bureau of Meteorology tide tables to find Which that... Which says it's almost 14 meters. In fact, yes. somebody up in the Kimberleys says, ah, yes, 13.3 meters, but that you must also realize that it goes down to minus 8.8 of a meter. So it's almost 20 meters, or so more than 20 no, meters. No, no <laughs> minus 0.8 of a meter. Yes. So 13.3 plus 0.8 is 14.1 meters is the tidal difference. So <laughs> Easy. That's a very, a very, those are very big tides, and there, there are a lot of places in the So Kimberley. how can we harvest that moving okay. level energy? Well, uh, you, you could harvest it firstly by uh, building a tidal barrage, which is a, a wall across holding the water back until you've got a two or three meter head. So and like a dam. Let it through. Like, like a, a dam. dam. Yes. Yes. Uh, let it let the water through the turbines and uh, uh, that drives, that drives the generators. Uh, so that was so done. So that technology is tested and tried all over the world and we got our Snowy River one and we got a much older than in, 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 in Tasmania. So we we got the well, dams, is and, we know, and we know hydro energy is working, is tested, and it's cheap, and it's, exactly it's, it's so. really good. Exactly so. so. And the same so, about the scheme. Yeah. Yeah, that's all, all happened in the Australian history twice, big time, that's with right. the full support of some of the premiers and prime ministers those times. Correct. Not today. Just so. And of course, um, 
Laurent's tidal power station was built in 1966, which is 50 years ago. In France? In France, yes. yes. Um, and today it generates the cheapest electricity in the whole of Europe. Um, and that's not and enough red flag in the face of Malcolm Turnbull. To say, <laughs> oh, we got the big chance, the yeah. cheapest energy in the world. Why don't we do it? Exactly. exactly. Because we need money. However, we need money for submarines. Yes. 55 billion dollars wasting right. on submarines. That's right. That's right. That's but not on something which is, creates a future. That's right. That's right. But submarines. Electricity. Okay, so that's innovation nation for us. Yes. That's good. Next step. So, okay. if in, in the Kimberley, which parts is possible to build these dams, which okay. are just similar well, as dams, but they tied with energy generators? Okay, What's the official name for those? Uh, well, it's tidal range energy. Uh, the the name that for, for that sort of dam, which a is barrage. barrage. It's, called, it's called a barrage, yes. Okay, well, sorry. Yeah, that's one method of harnessing it. You can also have tidal lagoons. Yes. Which, instead of blocking a, a, an, an estuary or uh, an existing bay uh, or inlet, you can say, well, here the water is shallow. I will build my own wall from the shore. Uh, out into the ocean and back again and let the water in and let the water out when the tide goes down and uh, vice versa. Like in so, Broome or anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is it. That's, that's the other issue. Uh, you know, the, the tide comes in and the tide goes out and then it, it turns around and for three quarters of an hour nothing's happening at the top and the bottom. Uh, so people say, well, where are you going to get the electricity from? Well, from between Darwin and Broome, According to our man-made time, there's a one and a half hour time difference. But according to the tides, it's yes. a four hour time difference. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And? So it means that along that coastline from Darwin to Broome, you it's can always be generating electricity. It's always going on. There's no, yeah, no pause right. whatsoever. Exactly. Somewhere there's always power being generated. So that's, that's uh, the way to overcome that's that. That's continuous. Yeah. Um, so what course, are the cost and how many uh, barrages or lagoon uh, walls you need to, get, to generate that 14 times more energy what well, Australia yeah. generates now in any times? Okay, the 14 times more is related to the tidal kinetic energy, the horizontal flow. Yes. Um, I'm talking about tidal barrages, which yes. is tidal range energy. Tidal it's range it's energy. now called tidal range because it uses the difference in height. So what is that to, could generate for Australia? That could generate uh, three times more electricity than we currently generate in the whole of Australia. Yes. If you look at the existing bays and inlets, and then you add on to that uh, tidal lagoons, which could be built. Um, I haven't done any estimates on tidal reefs, which is another way of harnessing uh, tidal yes. range energy. The Kimberleys, of course, is, is pretty remote. It's a long way from uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth. So how the energy comes from the Kimberley back ah, to Perth or Melbourne? That's, that's ultra, the big question. Ultra-high voltage DC bulk transmission lines. I never heard that one. Okay. Uh, Until H you brought my intention to that. Yeah. H explain H to me and explain to the audience why these energy transportation is new, first of all, and why it's useful for long yeah. distance well, H H transformation of energy with very minimal loss. HVDC has been around uh, for yeah, nearly 100 years. Yes. Um, so but, why the people don't know about it? Because oh, in this they, country they, it's not been used. Yes, it has. It has. Well, yeah, I mean, well, Basslink from Tasmania to Victoria is yeah, that HVDC. Was the first one, yes. Yeah? And that's undersea, and at the moment so it's broken down. So why is new then? Why are you saying there's a new way of transportation? Well, because uh, the transmission losses are a lot less, and it's very good for transmitting bulk power from A to B. Okay, you've got converter stations at each end. It doesn't matter whether the distance between is 180 kilometers or 2,800 kilometers. You still have a converter station at each end, and the cost of those converter stations is the same. So <laughs> you, you get the current up to 800,000 volts and you've got 3.5% uh, transmission loss per 1,000 kilometers. That sounds wonderful. It's very yeah. good. It's but not what we're using do, <laughs> definitely today. Yeah, if you do what, the, the, uh, what has, has recently been done in China is you go to 1 million volts 
HVDC bulk transmission, and they're transmitting that over 3,000 kilometers, and the, the transmission loss comes down to 2.4%. That's per incredible. One, per 1,000 kilometers. That's incredible. It's very low. Very low. It's very low. It's, yeah. it's, it's negligible, negligible, as you say. Exactly. As you say. Exactly. Just so. so, but the number of poles, of poles between the 2,800 case is the same number of poles what we need for for, for the other way of transmer, transmitting well, an edge? Yeah, you can, you can either go uh, overhead transmission. Overhead, yes, um, or underground. Or you can go uh, underground transmission. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my view is that we need to, you know, the, 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 the route that the power lines is going to take from, from the Kimberley or from Derby to Perth or from uh, Derby to uh, Melbourne or Sydney needs, of course, to be planned. And if you're going over hard rock um, formations, yes, then uh, yeah, you'd go overhead power lines. If you're going through sandy desert, you might just find, dig in, and that's it. You might find it easier to uh, dig a trench and put the cables in and forget about them for the next 50, 60, 70, 80 years. So, uh, uh, but it's all dollars and cents again. You know, yeah, which, but which it's, it's dollars and cents to. again. But if, if we're doing these economical solution of the energy supply for our nation, yes. then what the uh, politicians can do? They couldn't use the excuse, oh, energy prices have to go up in the next five years again and again. Sorry, energy prices have to go up and again and again. So we, we, they're losing the, the, the weapon against the people sitting at home. And they couldn't frighten them with energy prices. So right. they're losing That's their right. weapon. They yeah. don't want to have that, right. do they? Yeah. Well, not, uh, not only that, but I mean, uh, you know, uh, when you talk about money and finance, I'm, I, I think there would be a lot of older people who, uh, in their will, would be planning on leaving something for their grandchildren. So, OK, you can invest money in uh, HVDC power lines or tidal power projects, knowing that in 40 years' time, all the capital with interest has been repaid, uh, and now you're getting really good profits from it. That can go to the grandchildren. So, good way to go. <laughs> one a way lot to of go. way to go, I have to say that. <laughs> because it, in 40 years' time, once these uh, projects are paid for, it really will be the cheapest electricity on the planet. Because That's bad yeah. news for people who want to make only profit, 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 and profit, and more profit. Ivan, well, thank you very much for your visit. Thank your you very Marvick, much for having me, Tim. And your marvelous Marvick. So <laughs> we got a nice discussion on the tidal energy and the future and why the Australian politicians maybe don't want to have that. Next week, same time, same channel. Have your say, one-on-one -on -one shadow boxing. <laughs>